I want to talk about the Jews on the eve of the Second World War in Europe and the Middle East. I want to talk about them as a people and about them as a nation. And to put this discussion into the larger context of other peoples and other nations in that region on the eve of the Second World War. Based on what I've learned in interaction with students as a teacher, a good many, maybe most, maybe not, Americans understand that six million Jews died in the Holocaust. Most of those people don't understand how many Jews there were to start with. Were there seven million, 50 million? You know, the answer is somewhere around nine million. Estimates vary a bit. But there were about 9 million Jews in Europe, of whom two-thirds, 6 million, were exterminated. There were around another million Jews in North Africa and the Middle East. Some would put the number under a million, some over a million, but let's just use round numbers here, a million. So if you look at what in, in World War II was called the European Theater of War, which included North Africa and the Middle East, you're talking about 10 million Jews. Now, of course, there are other Jews in the New World. There are Jews in the United States. There are some Jews in places, you know, Africa, Jews in the Far East. But we're talking here about, you know, Europe and the Middle East on the eve of the Second World War. But what does that mean? What's the context to have a people, I would argue, a nation? How does that compare to other nations, other peoples in Europe in the Middle East at the time. Let's take a look, because it's pretty interesting if you think about it this way. This is Europe, 1939. Here's the Middle East. If you look at Europe, most of the countries in Europe had fewer than 11 million people. Let me repeat that. Most European countries had fewer than 11 million people. Finland didn't have uh, 11 million people. They had 3.7. Sweden, 6.3 million. Norway, 3 million. Denmark, about 3.8 million. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania all had much smaller populations. Russia was bigger than 11 million, much bigger. Poland was bigger. Germany was bigger. Austria, which had been incorporated into Germany by the eve of the war, had been around uh, around 6.3 million, something like that. Ireland didn't have 6 million people. They didn't have 9 million people. They didn't have 10 million people. They had about three. Portugal, proper, not counting its colonies, 7.6 million. Spain had more than 11 million, 10 million, more than 10 million, I mean. Italy had more than 10 million. Germany, obviously. Romania. Greece didn't. The Greek population was about 7 million. The Albanian population was about 1 million. The Bulgarians didn't have 10 million people. I forget exactly how many. They had 6.5 million. Hungary. 9 million. There were actually, just in Europe, there were as many Jews as there were Hungarians. And if you include the whole area, there were actually more Jews than there were Hungarians. And consider a part of the Hungarian population includes Jews. So actually, the Jewish population in Europe was bigger than the Hungarian population. So the only countries that actually have a larger population are Great Britain, Spain, France, Germany, Poland, Italy, and the USSR. Yugoslavia had a bigger population, but if you break it down into its component parts, some of those component parts like Slovenia, Croatia, Croatia, Macedonia, as it's broken down today, Bosnia, Herzegovina, had fewer than uh, 11 million or 10 million people. So just in Europe, you can see, the, if you look at Jews as a nation or a nation in being, they have a larger population than most of the other countries. They have a larger population in the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg, not to mention Vatican City, 
uh, Andorra, and what's the other one? Monaco, you know, which, are, which have nothing. Liechtenstein. So we're not even, I'm not even talking about them. What about the Middle East? The same is true in the Middle East. If you look at the Middle East, most of the countries do not have 10 or more million people. The Egyptians have more, Turkey has more, and Iran has more. In the Arab world, the only country with more than 10 million people is Egypt. Morocco, less than 9 million. Algeria, if you take out the French component, remember Algeria was considered France proper. It's a metropolitan area of France. So its population was mixed in with the French population. But the actual Arab population of Algeria was under 10 million. The same is true of Tunisia. Uh, Libya, which was under Italian control, population was a couple million. Uh, Saudi Arabia, let's see, the Saudis had 2.6 million. Trans Jordan was a little over a million. Palestine, a couple million there, many of whom were Jews. Lebanon, about a million. Syria was, uh, let's see, Syria is 2.5 million. Uh, Iraq actually has uh, fewer than 10 million people. And Saudi Arabia, I did Saudi Arabia, Transjordan, uh, Kuwait, Kuwait, 50,000 people. United Arab Emirates, which is down here, uh, in those days, the Trucial States, 110,000 people. Same with, it's Bahrain, smaller, Qatar, smaller, uh, uh, Muscat and Oman today, Oman, smaller, Yemen, smaller, Aden, smaller. They're all smaller. Again, the only countries in the Middle East that with larger populations than the 10 million Jews in the area are Iran, Turkey, and Egypt. And the only Arab country with a larger population than the Jewish population in, in the region of 10 million is Egypt. Every other Arab country had a smaller population than the number of Jews in this entire region. Every country except Egypt. And again, in Europe, most of the countries in Europe have smaller populations than the number of Jews in the region. And I don't think most people understand, yeah, they see Jews as this diasporic minority spread all around the world, which of course is what they were, but we don't think of them collectively as if, if they had all been brought together, just how many of them there were. Now, of course, what happens in the Holocaust is that 60% of them are exterminated which gives you, I think, a better understanding of just how horrible, dreadful, what a debacle the Holocaust was. I mean, if you think in terms of a Holocaust of, of 6 million dead, 6 million dead used against Arabs in the Middle East, you could wipe out 100% of the population of Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, and Transjordan. It, that would be the equivalent if you had an Arab Holocaust during the Second World War. Say for some reason, the British and French had decided to get rid of the Arabs in this region. Uh, you could eliminate it, the populations of Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, and Transjordan. That's the equivalent of what the Germans did to the Jewish population in, for the most part, Europe, especially Eastern Europe. I think one of the other implications of looking at the Jewish population as a nation within Europe, within Western Eurasia, has to do with this, the idea of a homeland. I mean, how can you say that the Jews don't deserve their own homeland? If 50,000 Kuwaitis deserve a homeland, what about 10 million Jews? If, you know, 6.7 million Portuguese deserve a homeland, you know, why not the Jews? Now, that's a separate question as to where that homeland should be. You know, I understand that. But again, if you think of the Jews as a nation, you know, albeit spread around, they're a bigger national group than the Greeks. They're a bigger national group than the Bulgarians. They're a bigger national group than Albanians, Portuguese, Dutch, Belgians, Luxembourg. Irish, Norwegians, Danes, Swedes, Finns, Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians, Hungarians. They're, they're 
in, even in Europe, they're as big as the Hungarian population. Slightly, probably slightly larger if you extract the Jewish component from the Hungarian population. All these other people, you know, have their own countries. Why shouldn't the Jews have a country? And even in the Middle East, if you look at the whole Middle East and you look at the Arab world, the only country in the Arab world with a larger population than the number of Jews who existed prior to the Holocaust was Egypt. There were more Jews than every other, you know, regional group grouping, Syrians, Lebanese, Libyans, Tunisians, etc. in the Middle East. You know, Emirates, 110,000 people. What percentage is that is compared to the Jewish population? So again, does that justify the establishment of a state of Israel? Separate question. You can say it doesn't. But I think it puts it into a different context than we usually look at it, as it does with the Holocaust. You know, to understand the impact of the Holocaust on this population. Like I said, if it, it, it happened in the Arab, the Levant, you know, six million people, you could wipe out the entire populations of Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and Palestine. That's how, what a big deal this was. You know, 60% of the Jews in Western Eurasia were eliminated. And I think if you look at the Holocaust in this larger context, which I think most people don't really appreciate in terms of the numbers, comparative numbers, and you look at the establishment of Israel within this context as to how big the Israeli nation was, the Jewish nation was in 1939, you know, it dwarfed. It was nine times the size of the Lebanese population, almost five times the size of the Syrian population, almost 10 times the size of the Jordanian population. He said the only Arab country with a larger population than the Jewish population in Western Eurasia was Egypt. That's it. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video, this larger context that I think is often goes missing, missing in discussions about the Holocaust, discussions about the Jewish diaspora in Western Eurasia, discussions about the ultimately, ultimate establishment of a Jewish state. Got something out of this video? Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you can. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.